like everything everything I was going to ask has already been um, <laughs> <laughs> you you preempted. Okay, you're at Shalam Advertising currently in JB. Um, okay, so just 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 to get some some basics, uh, were you all um, team knew each other before, or were you grouped by the organizers? Yeah, we're good by the organizer. By the organizer. <laughs> okay, and did they intentionally go for a, a, a all um, a female team, gender, same gender team? Uh, no, no. One? Actually, there's there's a uh, one guy, but he pulled out last minute due to some circumstances, lah. He got intimidated, is it? No, <laughs> <Yeah>. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, no, no, just kidding. Okay, so nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm also mindful of the time, so I don't want to need too much. Just a bit about myself. Um, I'm currently, do you know, did they give you your profile of the person who's um, moderating the groups or no, they just sort of, no, no, oh, okay. So, uh, no, they, oh no, okay. So yeah, otherwise they'd be like, who's this random guy like just trying to help us with the mental health? I don't know. So my name's Daniel, uh, Daniel full name is Daniel Abdurrahman. Um, I am currently a director at the Sunway Education Group. Um, I graduated in law. My undergraduate was from the International Islamic University in Gombak, Selangor, but I also did a master's at the University of Oxford. Um, so I've had some experience being in the UK for a while. This was, wow, nine years ago. So I'm not that, not that young anymore. Um, what else? Um, so I was also, so in terms of policy making, um, I was with the Ministry of Education, Higher Education for five years. And last year I was with the Ministry of Finance. So I've got sort of policy experience, you know, across various ministries, uh, and I've been in law for a while, and now I'm in, in, in the education group. Yeah, so so that's a little bit about me. Um, let's get into your um, this session, and let's see how we want how we want to do. So, um, do you all already have a, a particular case study that's assigned? Yes. Okay. What would you all like to do? Would you all like to um, sort of present and then? You know, I'll give some feedback and we see how we take it from there. Does that work? Uh, we only have drafted, uh, okay. not completed yet. Maybe I can share it with you if others are okay with it. I'm not sure. If you all, uh, if, in fact, if you need a moment to talk amongst your group, how you want to do this, just let me know. Yeah, yeah I'm okay with that. Just share it. Uh, you want me to share? Yeah. I'm okay with anything. Okay, which, which case study number did you get? The first one, which, the police one. Okay. Uh, can, can you all see this? Yep. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, first, uh, one thing I want to clarify here. Uh, in the task itself, or in the question itself, they have mentioned that uh, the conflict between the subordinates is uh, it's something that ha happened in the police station itself and it's haven't become the knowledge of public yet. So should we uh, do a discussion or like, should we do the press statement regarding this conflict between the subordinates in the press statement itself? Okay, um, just give me a moment. Let me just have a, oh, that's an interesting yeah. point that you pointed out. Is that, is, that, is that where it happened? Did the disagreement happen there? No, the whole case study is what provided in the email. It's not mm -hmm. here completely, but in the email, mm -hmm. I mean, in the question itself, they mentioned that the conflict, uh, the dispute between the subordinates happened in front, uh, in a police station front counter. So how to address this issue in the press statement? Okay, the police station front counter, I see what you mean, okay. Sorry, I have it here with me, so I'm actually looking at both. Uh, that's an interesting point. Um, I'm not sure whether Azwan is allowed to, to say. So are they allowed to make certain caveats uh, before they start the presentation? For which one? <clears throat> so for instance, in this one, um, so your task has been to come up with a press uh, release, right? Um, yeah. And how would you approach the conflict? As, so you're the IGP of police. How would you approach this conflict with your subordinates, taking into consideration the public interest? You'll also be making a press statement on some of the issues, should be some of the issues, keyword, that's right, should be, that should be addressed during the press statement, including how would you resolve the dispute between the two subordinates with different opinions? 
um, how would you handle the public's backlash with the issue of the fine? Okay, interesting. So, okay, I think I think um, you all you all were told what the criteria are for the judges, right? The ten criteria. Uh, for the criteria, actually, we can't disclose it to the participants, but we given them some tips inside the case study, okay. which is quite close with the judging criteria. Sir. Okay, okay. Because I thought um, just now uh, when I was asking what's uh, Arisha, she's saying that they know the, the, the sort of areas, they just don't know the scoring. Or is it? Uh, yeah, basically, it's like that. Lah. Uh, we give them tips like almost similar to the ju judging scoring, but I we see. don't disclose. Oh, you don't disclose it specifically. Mm. Okay. But we already give them some tips, lah. For example, like uh, do some problem statement, etc. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. I just just wanted to, to clarify. Um, so, team, what do you think? You what would you what do you think would be a good way to approach this? Let me ask you that question. Uh, regarding the fine uh, which was issued to the burger hawker, uh, Elisa mentioned here that the fine will be reduced, but uh, he won't get excluded from paying a fine just because the post or the issue went viral. Because if this is the case, then everyone will take advantage by making it a viral so that like, they get the exclusion from paying the fine. And another thing, the final amount of uh, final amount of fine that need to be paid will be uh, decided by the district health officer. So whoever is not, uh, is unsatisfied with the fine imposed, they can make an appeal at the uh, district health officer. If they're still unsatisfied, they can bring it to the magistrate. That's what okay. we are going to write down here. Okay, what are your, um, okay, so uh, that's, that's a good point. Um, do, do you want to do we want to go through what you've written here? Maybe you run me through. You've given me a good summary, um, and I can either either you can ask us, I can start asking questions, or you can uh, explain to me some more if you want to. Uh, so you're Elisa, supposed. Yeah. Sorry, Elisa, could you summarize this because you've done a few part of it? I just edited it a bit. Elisa. Oh, she can't turn on her mic now. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. okay um, uh, another point hmm. that we want to bring it here is regarding the fine, the fine wouldn't be uh, equal to everyone. We want hmm. to make a new, uh, not to say announcement, but we will consider to uh, impose a fine uh, based on their uh, salary or the business revenue because we don't want it to be unfair where a burger hawker and a KFC get the same amount of fine if they are running their business over 10 p.m. It won't be the it won't be a fair decision because the revenue of each and every business differ. So we want to uh, have a law. I, we don't know. I don't know whether as a royal police militia we have the right to decide or to make an announcement in this. But maybe we can just act as a messenger of higher officials where we just announce it on behalf of our higher officials. Is it okay? Are you are you when you say announcing, are you what are you what are you announcing? No, Is this because, with regards uh, to a, a fine? Or the, to be, uh, the fine to be uh, around seven to ten percent of a person's of an individual's salary or a business revenue. So it differs. It differs according to their salary. Okay. Uh, it, why is that? Because uh, we, want, we want it to be fair, like 10,000 for someone can be a uh, uh, huge money and for another person, it, it's not so huge okay. money. Do you have any benchmarks on why you're suggesting 7 to 10%? Uh, it's affordable. Uh, and you're assuming it's affordable. What if it's more than 10,000 ringgit? What if it's more than the maximum fine? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't get the point. Sorry. That's it. So you're saying you may want to suggest a seven to ten percent uh, benchmark for the fine, right? As opposed okay. to an absolute number. What if the the percentage that you're imposing is higher than a hundred thousand or is higher than ten thousand? It's possible, isn't it? No. Okay, maybe we are uh, like 
it's already said that the maximum amount would be 100,000 right. by the prior ordinance. So mm -hmm. we just make sure that uh, the fine imposed to each and individual will be like 7 to 10% of the salary, but it don't exceed the limit of 100,000. Okay. Um, I, so what I would say is there's nothing wrong in proposing that. Uh, my question would go to, if you wanted to propose an alternative, i.e. the IGP, because you're now the Inspector General of Police, right? Yeah. So you are the most senior person in the police force, right? So when you want to suggest uh, something, you have to say how that works within the ambit of the existing uh, ordinance. And the ordinance here is the Emergency Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Ordinance 2021, right? So when I ask you, do you have any benchmarks? What I'm asking is, is it being implemented in any other countries? So here's a bit of advice that I would give you. If you're going to propose something or take an approach, it's always good to have an analogy of another country that might be doing something of this sort. Then that, what that does is it says, look, this has been practiced in other countries. Um, the practice is equitable. And this is how we assess the amount of fine that should be given, right? So as a policeman, if you're finding an individual, the most you can find an individual is 10,000. But how do you decide if it's 1,000 or 5,000 or 6,000? Am I right, Shashini and team? Uh, is it how emotional the person gets? Is it because the person cries in front of you? What you're saying is that you have the guideline, maximum 10. As a police force, you're going to tell your police officers, the guideline is for individuals, for example, you're going to uh, maybe find them between 7% and 7 and 10% of their what, salary. When you say salary, are you talking about monthly salary? Uh, salary? Are you talking about gross salary? Okay, so before that, let's, 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 let's take a step back for a moment. Um, let's talk about the first one first. How would you resolve the dispute between the two, subord two subordinates with different opinions? So now you're the IGP, you're going to come up and, and say, uh, how are you going to start your uh, press? Do we only have seven minutes left? That's ridiculous. That's too fast. <laughs> That's too short. Well, uh like even I have some confusion regarding the part A. No problem, just ask me. About how, to, how to address this in front of the public? Because uh, according to the question itself, it haven't become the knowledge of public yet. Like they don't know, like the two officers have any yeah, issues mm -hmm. of that. But if our press statement includes this, isn't it a bit like they, like they don't know about yeah. our two officers is like having two opinions and yeah. They just, I think the public only know about the hawker, the burger stall, which is Kena Saman and it got viral or something. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they don't know about the police officer A and police officer B. Yeah. Okay. Um... This, so based on the facts, it did say that they um, were, were, were having a disagreement at the police station front counter. Um, in paragraph uh, five, the last paragraph, it says, um, additionally, the hawker took his anger to social media. Am I right? Um, so it doesn't really say whether what was shared on social media, whether the hawker, was the hawker there when, when the fight happened? Do you know? Does it mention in the facts? So I'm just trying to run through. Police A issued 50,000. Police A claimed he received a complaint. Uh, this is based on a true story, by the way. You all know that, right? So this came out in the news. However, Police B disagrees, etc., etc. She claimed the police officer had not used his discretion. Therefore, his first one should be sufficient to remind the burger hawker. Okay, so I think I'll put it this way. Um, I don't know whether Azwan is allowed to tell us, but can they make caveats before they start their presentation? Or can that be part of the um, the presentation. Do you know? That's why we've got as one here. One is not allowed to assist. I think. I'm not allowed to assist. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's tough. Okay, so you so as a team, you've got two potential options here. Like number one is you assume what you just said. Um, the hawker is not aware of the dispute that happened within the front counter. Am I right? And what you do is, as when I don't know whether then when you present to your judges, you can just say, uh, before we start the press conference, we would like to make a few assumptions first. So what you do is you set your ground for it. 
So what? So what do you do? I think you you sort of re uh, mentioned the facts, right? Essentially, there's somebody that got fined. Um, this person who got fined, the hawker, then took to social media. But at the same time, what happened was there was a dispute between um, the police officers uh, internally, and that one was not something that was uh, shared externally. So you make you have to make these reasonable assumptions. Then you go into uh, the press conference. So I would assume the press conference largely addresses. Um, what happened in terms of social media? Do you think that's a that's one potential approach? Because I don't want to accidentally misguide you, and then you do this, and then the judges say that. Uh... I think the safest method is to, as you said, make caveats and then just go on with um, the press statement as usual. Otherwise, I mean. It will be quite confusing as if, as if what are we um, hmm. disputing on? Because so if you look at the task document, what it says is it says actually two things. Now that I'm rereading it properly, I start, I'm just starting to see it. So it says, as the IGP of the Royal Malaysian Police Force, how would you approach this conflict with your subordinates taking into consideration the public's interest? Right? So that seems to be something you have to address on its own. Um, and then the second one is you will also be making a press statement. So it almost assumes that the press statement is separate from, it's two parts, am I right? Just that when it comes to the instruction, they say that each team is expected to send two members who will be speaking for the press statement. The rest of the team will not be speaking, but Q&A, you'll be in 10 minutes to make the press statement, followed by five minutes, uh, then the judges can. So you're right, I, as a technical point, I'm not sure whether the whole thing is meant to be a press conference or whether it's, you can sort of, Split it. I think maybe you will, if, 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 I don't know if Azwan, since you cannot mention it here, maybe you can mention it later just to check the point. Okay, but let's, let's move on. Let's, 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 let's move on to how exactly do you think you would approach it? So let's assume, um, forget that, you know, caveats aside, how would you approach the issue then? Sorry, what was your question again? I mean, the, my question is, so um, how would you uh, approach the, the, the issue of <clears throat> the subordinates fighting with each other? Well, I mean, if you have a strong ground and you can explain yourself, I assume that two subordinates would have understand, because like also we are coming to a, into some sort of a middle ground not saying A is wrong, not saying B is wrong. We're just saying that, you know, somewhere in between should be the better answer. So I think by explaining it to the subordinates, they should understand or, you know, breaking it down um, for them. Okay. Um, let's assume you are the IGP. Right, and you are talking to your and it, let's let's say a member of the media ask, uh, Mr. IGP, we've heard rumors that two of your police officers were fighting. Can you comment on this issue? How would you answer that? And we and let, let me add to that question to make it um, more interesting. And we heard that uh, police officer B had was police officer A was the one that imposed the big fine, whereas po police officer B said that um, there has to be more discretion. Do you have any comments, Mr. IGP? Can we go about saying um, we have discussed it as a team and the team has agreed about it. And this is what we have come up with. And A and B are happy or A and B have, um, have come into a common dis uh, agreement that this is the best answer afterwards. Okay, Something that's, that's interesting. <laughs> Okay, so that's fine. Um, take note of what, I, what I'm asking. Eh? So the next question becomes, as IGP, what are your authorities under the law uh, that you can use here? So what you have now, you have police officer A saying that I'm issuing the, the fine at its maximum, whereas police officer B said that there had to be discretion. Now, in your, if you were the IGP, your first question you have to ask yourself is, does the police have discretion under this law, under this emergency prevention and control efficiency easy amendment ordinance. Am I right? 
So I'll give you an example and I'm, I'll try to, I know times, times a bit rushed. Um, so if you're the police, uh, let me just show you an example. The, police, the example would be something like, um, uh, so Mr. IGP, uh, we found that your two officers were fighting. Do you have any comments? So I'll probably go. So uh, on the point of fighting, you know, disagreements happen in terms of how the law is to be enforced. And I've advised my officers that they should work together. And in the event that they're uncertain of what to do, they can actually consult with each other. The fact is, this has already happened. But as an enforcer of the law, we have to look at what the law says. So your job, so based on the emergency ordinance 2021, I don't have it with me now, law says that in the event an individual is found to have committed a certain offense, et cetera, et cetera, here's what the police does. Okay, I haven't seen it. I don't have it with me. You all need to look it up because this is your expert of research. If the, if the law says there's no discretion, right? So let's say, according to the law, there is no discretion on the part of the police. If somebody is found to have committed an offense, we will have to impose the maximum charge. And that is the 50,000. However, if an individual is aggrieved and disagrees with the fine, they will have to write in to, Sashwini, you were saying earlier, they have to appeal to whom? District health officer. Exactly. So you have to look at that as well. Is that what is provided for in the law? So the IGP will say, look, yes, my guys had uh, an altercation. There was obviously differences in opinion. We believe that this should have been handled a bit more, blah, 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 blah. But the law says this, for example. But let's assume the law allows for discretion. Then you all can use a bit more emotional. Uh, yes, the law says that the maximum fine is 50, but they can go for anywhere in between 0 to 50. Am I right? So as I said earlier, uh, as a guidance, here's what I'm going to tell my police officers to do for the future. If there's an instance where there's a breach, the first point is they need to give a warning, for example. Right? Second time, if the person is a repeat offender, then we'll charge impose. But let's say, like you might say, but this is times of COVID. We don't have time for warnings. If we don't find them, they're not going to do anything. Therefore, the guideline is 7-10% of their salary or something. If you were to go that route, so if you were to draw lines, right? You're talking about like a bit of a tree branch. You go this way, you go this way. Then you'll say, um, here's the guideline, 7 to 10 percent. And as Inspector General of Police, I believe that this is within the law. Are you all okay so far? It's quite, it's quite a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Okay, let's let's quickly look at number two. How would you handle the public's backlash with the issue of fine? And this is pure PR um, from the IGP. So you're the IGP, you are now talking to the press. Let's assume the media goes, uh, yeah, so based on uh, social media, this person, Hopper, said that uh, they were just preparing the burgers. Uh, they were finishing the order so they could send it out. The grab guy was waiting for me. Um, then your police officer came and then didn't want to give chance, no chance. And then immediately summon 50,000. Um, IGP, what would you do? Would you rescind the fine? Okay, so what, what have you all... Uh, maybe I would say uh, his mistake is he received the order. Maybe he just limit the time by 9.30. After 9.30, he didn't receive an order. So he don't have a need to prepare any food after 10 p.m. If we just set a limit until 9.30 to receive the order so he can complete it by the time 10 p.m. So you don't have the need to run after 10 p.m. Yeah. Okay. So as... Um... You would also have to make some assumptions here because you don't know what the hawker said on social media. Am I right? Or, you know, usually what happens is when a hawker is, when people are complaining, they will not put it in full, right? They will write their version of the story. So as IGP, you, you will have to give the facts based on what your officers have found out. Am I right? So the IGP has to start off by saying, we know this is what the social media said. Let me share with you what my uh, officers have discovered. So they'll unpack it. Then after that, the IGP says, um, you know, uh, my officer in that moment realized whatever, 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 and then decided to issue the fine. Right? And then he says, La, no, nonetheless, under the law, we are allowed to appeal, therefore the hawker has to appeal. So I think what's important here is, it is as much um, the police enforcing the law, but they also must show compassion, right? Because the facts are also um, silent on certain things. Uh, if you look at the real story that this case is based on, the individual was uh, apparently warned before so this isn't the first time right so you may want to assume i don't know whether you're allowed to but i think if you can assume that that's what the igp has to say uh, and these are within your team everybody has to be certain of the facts um, what i think would help so i'm looking at your notes now on your google document um, you may want to have sort of like your three or four key takeaways so have it in bullet form instead of full sentence because later on when you go to the q a 
the judge, the two who have presented, the judge might start asking the others, right? For example, if I go to, uh, sorry, not the judge, sorry, the, the media. So if I ask say, right? Oh, say, uh, oh, bless you, I saw you sneeze. Uh, <laughs> oh, bless you. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, let's ask somebody else then. <laughs> who is, who can I not see on my screen? Sorry, my screen also a very limited capacity, right? Um, uh, oh, yeah. maybe Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Daniel, but yeah, no we, problem. the time is up actually. Oh, the time we is up. To to, yeah. yeah, we have to move to another group. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, um, how do we do this? Uh, can we wrap up here at least? Uh, are we allowed as one to have like a, a, a few more minutes after the sessions are done if the team wants? Uh, it, uh, it's not loud because uh, okay. you will give them unfair advantage. Okay, okay, no problem. Absolutely fine. Okay. Maybe we'll have uh, one last uh, question Tomorrow. to wrap it up. Yeah. Tomorrow, is it the same team or different team as well? Tomorrow will be the reverse group. La. Group 8 first, after that, group 7. Are we going to meet? Oh, Mr. so we're Daniel. meeting again tomorrow. Pardon? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We can meet Mr. Daniel tomorrow, right? Okay. Okay. So team, uh, I, I think that's a, that's, that's, a, that's, I hope, I hope at least what I've done here has, has helped you a bit. Um, I think just to close off, just have your points, uh, your key points and, and what your, your aims are with the press conference. Uh, and, and I'll see you tomorrow then. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, group seven. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All the best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So we can discuss. Uh, you guys can discuss uh, with your own. Um, okay. Need to go to room eight. Bye bye. bye. Okay. Oops. Okay. Um, so let's very quickly do some introductions so I can know yeah. who, you are, who all of you are first. Um, Maliha, why don't you start? So we'll go around in a circle. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Maliha. I'm currently a second year mechanical engineering. 